Natalia. Hi. Hold on one sec. It's literally. There you are. Okay. Let me see. Can you test your sound really quick so I can hear you? Yes. Can you hear me? One Yay. Second. Perfect. Yes. Perfectly. Okay. Awesome. Good. Yay. So we have a few people with us early. If you're here early, just hang out. We'll be getting started in eight minutes. You can go do whatever you need to do and know that we'll be starting right on the hour. How are you? So good. I'm getting my dog to lay down because her, I can just hear everything. Bob, go lay down. Thank you. I'm doing so good. I'm so excited about this. How are you? You look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. So do you. Um, I'm so excited yeah. too. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. all my people, and they're like, we need this. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Oh, my God. I am I put together a very, very comprehensive, um, very comprehensive, but very simple and amazing astrology rundown for you guys. So it's going to be awesome. Amazing. Can't wait. Um, you know what, Danielle? I want to also make sure that I can share my screen. Mm -hmm. I'm the host now, right? So I can share. You are the host. Fantastic. Okay, let me just, I'm going to make sure. Can you see this? I can. Yay. Okay. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, I love a good, I love a good keynote. Okay, looking good. You can see everything? Yep, that looks perfect. Okay, perfect. That's exciting. Okay. All right, we're just testing. Everyone Anyone here behind the scenes. What? <laughs> I said everyone here, yeah, gets a sneak peek behind the scenes. Sneak peek. Oh my goodness. And it's actually really cool we're doing this today because we're just at 29 degrees Libra. So we are about to move in. I think actually tonight, I'll check when we're when we're cruising through the charts. But I think that yeah, tonight we will be moving into Scorpio. So we're moving into a brand new season. Amazing. Exciting. Or a season according to astrology. New sign. Yeah. We chose this day for a reason. Yeah. I love 22 <laughs> as well. It's one of my favorite numbers. Well, right. The 22nd, of course. What'd you say? I was thinking why 22? And then I looked at the date. <laughs> it was the 22nd. I forgot what day. I was like, oh my goodness. It's been, cause I move, I'm moving in a week as well. So, you know, time just, it's time is an interesting thing when you're moving. I told you I'm moving in a week, right? Yeah, a week from today. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, I would love for all of you that are with us early to use the Q&A and maybe let us know your name and where you're coming from. Yes. So yeah, if you are here, the, the chat is not going to be enabled this evening, but the Q&A is. So yes. you can open that. 
And great, we have Megan from Nashville, Tennessee. Haley from Haley, Utah. That's cool. Cool. Um, Kimberly from Minnesota. Polly from Denver. Polly, I'm just down the road from you in Boulder. Laura and Snowy St. Paul. Hi, Krista in Burlington, Vermont. Dylan, you're in Portland, Oregon. Welcome. Anthony, another Denver, Colorado, right on. And Jennifer from Denver. She says, thanks for doing this. And Denver, Colorado. Oh man, I love Colorado. I wish I was having a season, beautiful season like you guys. So, yeah, the leaves are gorgeous and these fires are not so much, but. Oh man. Well, hopefully we'll get some snow tonight and that will help. Uh, God, pray for snow. Pray for snow. <laughs> Cara, Nashville, Janine from Chicago. Cami is also from Utah. Cindy, hey, from Maryland. Kind of fun. Great okay. guys. Temple, Texas. Chapel yeah. Hill, North Carolina. Virginia, South Carolina. From Ontario, Canada. Welcome, Laura. Nice. Brianna from Philly. Right on. You guys are great. Yeah, welcome, you guys. Thanks for coming. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have um, come in since we turned this on. So if you're just joining us, don't worry, we haven't begun yet. We just wanted to get to know you all a little early and have you tell us who you are and where you're from. <laughs> get extra creative and tell us something that you really want to get out of tonight. Bonus point. Yeah. Or your zodiac sign. I love starting with that. If anybody wants to share their zodiac sign and where they're coming from, if anybody wants to just put their zodiac sign, that's great. It's always fun to see who is drawn to, <laughs> to these classes. Shoot. Got a Libra, Polly, Libra, Leo Sun, Cap Rising, me too. Laura Cap Sun, Scorpio, nice, Cindy. It's almost your birthday. <laughs> Taurus, Aquarius, Sun and Aries, Moon and Virgo. Beautiful. I, f I figured we're going to have some, some people here tonight who know all their big three because we're going to go through that tonight. Capricorn, Gemini. Nice. Cool. Um, do you want to see Maria's question, Danielle? Yeah. Um, Maria, tonight is more wellness so we're not going to be talking about mushroom coffee but i would love to have our team talk to you about mushroom coffee another time um but what we're drinking uh natalia and i tonight is a mushroom blend so this is actually a caffeine free total immune support blend with all 10 of the mushrooms we use and rose hips for the vitamin c so a really great product this time of year awesome Yes, and anything caffeine free for me because as an aries i caffeine later in the day is just just no. <laughs> Just no. Just a hard no. You guys will know why after tonight, unless you're an Aries, you understand. All right. No, cool. So we're getting lots of signs coming through. Thailand from an Aries sun. Yes. Cancer, Lori, Dylan, Cancer. Beautiful. You guys are amazing. Love it. All right. Or say it goes with anything. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. For sake with all the signs. Yes, that's right. All the time. I'm excited. Welcome everyone joining. We're having you all share if you feel comfortable your where you're from and your sign in the Q and A. Yeah, um, E who just wrote in um, the chat is disabled tonight, so it's just going to be the Q and A. Thanks for bringing that up. Oh yeah, everyone knows Sandra from Queens. Everyone knows all of their sun rising and moon, which is Sandra. Aries from Vegas, Montreal Virgo. Hello, Julia. Gemini Sun, Scorpio Moon, Virgo rising. Yes. Gemini with the Pisces rising, Leo Moon. You guys are awesome. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. I'm really excited about tonight. 
Las Vegas Libra. Love short and sweet. Just tell us what you are. Where are you at? <laughs> Capricorn in the Virgin Islands. Awesome. Coming from San Diego, Rachel, Aries Sun. Nice. Fellow Aries over here. Nice. I love it. Terry is coming from Malaysia. Thanks for being here. That's wow. Fun. I think it's, I, don't quote me. I don't remember the exact. That's a big time difference. So awesome for you. Hopefully it is a a nice time of day for you. Hopefully it's not like three in the morning or something like on Saturday. I love these new locations that just come in. We have a, a, Terry from Malaysia and then we have Austin right after. Welcome Austin. And he is living out of his van in Venice Beach. Nice. Oh, Austin. We're, We're neighbors. Off. We're in the same city. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. All right, cool. I'm excited. Okay. It's one minute past and we have so much to cover. So I want to yes. jump right in. Um, mm -hmm. Also have people filtering in. So welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you joining us. Um, if you have been here for a few moments, you've heard me say the chat is disabled this evening, but we will be using the Q&A feature. So you can ask questions to Natalia and myself through the Q&A tonight. And uh, it is just, so exciting that Natalia is here with us this evening. I couldn't be more thrilled about tonight's webinar and just about what she's up to in the world and being a woman's empowerment coach. And if you aren't familiar with Natalia already, such a warm introduction to her tonight. And I want to just share a little bit about who she is and um, hype her up a little bit. And then you can say a big welcome in the Q&A. <laughs> So by fusing the spiritual world with practical tools for empowerment, Natalia Benson has helped thousands of private clients make meaningful choices and changes in their lives. She works in corporate wellness with major institutions and on a personal level via private coaching, panels, and lectures. You may know her as the former astrology contributor for whowhatwhere.com, where she gained a following for her intuitive nurturing advice. This LA-based speaker, women's empowerment coach, and fashionable mystic trains clients around the world. Her clients seek counsel on relationships, health, money, career, and work-life balance, among many other topics. Natalia's mission is to deliver people back to themselves, to help them find the love, the expansiveness, and the true fulfillment that is within them. Her her transformative work has been featured on Harper's Bazaar, Well and Good, Women's Health, Zoe Report, Modern Luxury, Silicon Valley, and so many other outlets. And her first book, Mystical AF, was released in February 2020. So thank you so much for being here, Natalia. What a beautiful full bio. Oh my God, thank you. It's it's I'm, I'm glad I got through it. I, it's, I'm so honored and I'm also like, wow, okay, thank you so much. It's, it's kind of funny. Thank you guys. I'm really, really honored to be with you tonight. And thank you, Danielle and Four Sigmatic for having me. Should I just take it away or we've got some orders of business to do first? Yeah, quick orders of business. And okay. I'll pass the mic to you, Natalia. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited. <laughs> I am too. So please feel free to ask questions throughout in the Q&A. Um, we won't get to them throughout the time, but we'll leave 10 minutes at the end to go through your questions. So please feel free as things arrive, arise to ask those questions. Um, and kind of a bonus fun thing that we're doing is if you take a screenshot during the webinar or if you take a little video and you post it to social and tag for Sigmatic and Natalia underscore Benson, um, we're going to be giving away Natalia's book uh, to a lucky winner. So that her new book, Mystical AF, and our amazing Four Sigmatic um, mushroom blend, which is what we're both drinking. So this blend of 10 immune supporting mushrooms and uh, rose hips for vitamin C. So grab something, whether it's mushroom blend or something else cozy to be sipping on. Um, go get a pen and paper. You'll want to take lots of notes for, throughout this. And of course, stay till the end because we created a special discount code um, as a thank you for all of you being here. So with that said, you can take it away. <laughs> all right, awesome. 
Well, hello everyone. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Danielle. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Thank you guys all for joining me tonight. And thank you again to Four Sigmatic. So I'm going to go ahead and take it away. We have got so much amazing stuff to do tonight. So let's go ahead and get started. And Danielle, I am going to, you're going to be my cue just to make sure that you can see my screen. So just making sure you can see my screen. Thumbs up. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So you guys, right before we begin, obviously I cannot see you, but I am connecting to you. We're coming together from all over the world. And before we start, I would actually love if you could close your eyes for just one moment and just center into the present. Of course you're here. Maybe you are super versed in astrology. Maybe you have never, um, you have no idea what astrology is about. So wherever you're coming from, whatever you've experienced today, whatever your year has felt like, your month has felt like, the last hour has felt like, I invite you into this space tonight just to receive, to learn, to have fun, Fun and to just enjoy being present. Now, before we begin with those beautiful eyes closed, let's just take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. Let it go. Let's do one more deepest breath in that you've taken all day. Exhale out of the mouth. Let it go. And then how about the deepest breath in through the nose that you've taken all year? So deepest breath in, fill up all four corners of those beautiful lungs, hold the breath for just a moment, and then exhale, let it go and go ahead and open your eyes. So once again, welcome, welcome, welcome to Astrology 101 webinar with myself, Natalia Benson, and for Sigmatic. So let's dive in. So first off, I want to invite you tonight to have a beginner's mind. So whether you actually are a total newbie or you're super, super versed in astrology, I invite you tonight to just have a beginner's mind. Actually, for me, as a, as a human being who has been obsessed with astrology since the age of about 22, so working on about 11 years working with astrology, I still have a beginner's mind. And so I invite you into that space. When we have a beginner's mind, Mind, and this goes for any part of our lives, we can have more fun. We can be gentle with ourselves in the process. And then we also do my favorite thing where we avoid one of the statements that I feel actually keeps us from the magic of life. Do you know what that is? It's, I know that. So we don't, we can never know anything and it's actually, we can never know everything. And it's actually what we do once we know everything that matters. So we can always go deeper. So I invite you to have just a depth of joy tonight, as well as a beginner's mind. So first and foremost, what's astrology? So I want to first give you a basic definition. It's going to sound very, very simple. So astro, stars, ology. Do you remember this from biology class? Study of theory of blah, blah, blah. So the study of the stars. So that's the basic. So this is the basic idea of astrology, the study of the stars. And then what is astrology according to, to my definition? And as I said, a human being has been obsessed with astrology for a very, very long time. So I essentially look at astrology as the study and understanding of human expression and our potential as well as our energetic relationship to the astros or to the cosmos. Why did I underline energetic? Because in my opinion, astrology has a magic to it. There's things about it that sometimes you're like, wait, how? The dreaded question of how, the hows. Sometimes the hows cannot always be explained. I really believe there is also a magic and an energy to this work and to this science. So another thing very quickly, I look at astrology as an art and a science. So the science is the system of astrology, and that's what I'm going to show you a little bit about tonight. And then the art is you, the astrologer, you, the practitioner, you're the artist. And so based on your lived experience, based on your background, your perspective on life, you're going to approach the system of astrology in a much, in a unique way. 
And then lastly, a big thing about astrology for me is that it is a tool for self-empowerment and self-compassion. I believe that when you get to know and understand yourself, you cannot help but fall in love with yourself. When you can understand that your brother that drives you crazy is a said, I'm not going to pinpoint any, any, any single zodiac sign, but when you, you understand your brother is this zodiac sign or your mom is this zodiac sign or your brother or your boss is this zodiac sign, maybe because you have this understanding of yourself, you can also extend this compassion, this understanding towards them. So tonight, my loves, let's go ahead and get to know ourselves via the language of the cosmos. Does that sound good? I hope you're excited. I wish I could see all of you, but that'd be a lot of people to look at. Danielle, how are we doing so far? I like to say, I do this. I send energy to the screen all the time. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds amazing. And I can just say firsthand from even knowing such a little bit about astrology, the first time I heard there was context around a relationship I was in and I said, yeah. oh, but he does this and he does this. And and we looked at his chart and it was like, oh, these are actually parts of, of who he is. And this is written yeah. in the charts. And it was this instant compassion of, oh, yes. I took this judgment piece out of it and allowed a newfound understanding. And I think yes. whether it's with relationships or with ourselves, most importantly, it is just such an amazing tool to have in our tool chest, especially Absolutely. if that's feel uncertain. Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that when we have a deeper relation, let me tell you guys super, super quickly, you know, my why for getting to know astrology is so that I could just have a deeper relationship with myself so that no matter what is going on in the external, that I still know that I have myself. I've, I've heard my intuition say that to me many times throughout my life. And so astrology is an amazing tool in the toolbox and it can be one of many, many tools, an amazing tool in the toolbox for self-understanding, self-empowerment, self-compassion, because I believe when you have a relationship to yourself, it's so beautiful and powerful what you can weather, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what externally is happening in your experience. There is, you know, when you have that core relationship to self, which is what understanding astrology is all about, oh my goodness, we're, we're good. And that's what we're going to do tonight. It's going to be fun. Okay. Now stay with me. Where I'm going to walk you through the basics and then I'm going to walk you through the basics of tonight. So there's going to be a little bit of a, a difference here. So stay with me. So first and foremost, just so you guys know, just so when you start to get into astrology and you're like, wait, Natalia didn't tell me about this and she didn't mention this. You're not going to, you're not going to DM me and, and be like, why didn't she tell me about this? So first we're going to start, we're going to talk about the astrology basics and then we're going to focus on the basics that we're going to take a look at tonight. So first and foremost, there are 12 zodiac signs and 12 houses. And I'm going to explain why that is in just a moment. There are 10 planets because why? There are 10 planets that we know of in our solar system. There are six asteroids and there's actually way more asteroids than that, but there are six that we focus on in Western astrology. And then astrology, we also deal with the four elements. And so just to segue into my next slide is very, sim very similar to what I said with the uh, beginner's mind. I want you also to adopt this Audigé. And if I could see you right now, I would make sure that you're doing this with me. So do this with me. I, I don't know what we're about to do. We're going to do something with our hands. We're going to employ the KISS method. Okay. So just go like this. Keep it simple, sweetheart. So actually do it with your hands, you guys. I know I, I'm not able to see you. I miss you. But let's just do this together. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Okay. Now remember this forever. And if you start to feel yourself spinning into your left brain and all kinds of questions and hows and confusions, just do this to yourself. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Because here's the thing, especially as you're getting to know astrology or whether you are well-versed, it is extremely complex. And so we always want to do our best to keep it simple because a foundation based on simplicity is a powerful foundation. Okay. So once again, these astrology based 12 zodiac signs in the 12 houses. Why are there 12 and 12, Natalia, you may ask? So there are 12 houses and each of the houses are ruled by a zodiac sign. So we've got 12 and 12. But let me just tell you something. For what we're going to do tonight, what do I want you to focus on? 
we are only going to be focusing on the zodiac signs and the planets tonight. So we're not going to look at the houses. I am going to talk to you a little bit about them, but to begin, let's just focus on the zodiac signs and the planets. All right, so let's let's get it going with the planets. You guys, please, please, please write this down and I will slow down. I'm an Aries with a Sagittarius moon. When I get excited, there's a lot of fire going on. So I'm going to slow it for just a second. I want you guys to remember this tonight and with every, the, the rest of your astrology study, please always remember that the planets have personalities, okay? The, the ancient ancient astrologers, they referred to the planets as the wanderers. They were these moving, wandering energies in the sky. But what I want you to focus on is the idea that planets have personalities, okay? So make sure that you write that down and underline it like 10 times but not too many times. I don't want you to take up too much space on your paper. And then let's take a look at the zodiac signs. Now the zodiac signs are how the planets express their unique personalities. Okay. So you guys, I, if, and maybe some of you are here tonight, you've been with me before. You know that I repeat myself a lot because repetition is the mother of learning. Now, Planets have personalities. So remember this always. Everyone here, I know that you know your sun sign. So everybody is familiar with the sun. Everybody's familiar with the moon. These are because these are the, we can see them. We're, we're very aware. Unless, I don't know where you've been if you're not aware of the sun and the moon, but we all know about the sun and the moon. So let's just take these as examples super, super quickly. So the sun's basic personality, it's where you shine. It's where you it's where you, you uh, let me think of the best word for this. It's sort of like your lens on reality. So let's look at the personality of the sun where you shine and kind of like the sunglasses that you put on to look at the world, okay? So that would be the sun. And then let's think about the moon, the personality of the moon. The personality of the moon has to do with emotions. So everything with the moon, just think emotions and more of the secret self because think of the moon in the sky and how it moves through phases. Sometimes we see the moon in all of her entirety, Sometimes we don't see the moon at all or we see a little crescent. So these are the parts of our personalities that wax and wane just like our emotions. So remember, the sun is that basic expression of personality. The moon is more the emotional, the waxing and waning, and the deep part of the self that sometimes we don't even have access to or we're not readily aware of. Now, the zodiac signs, the house. So a sun placed in Aries is going to express itself very differently than a sun placed in Capricorn. A moon placed in Cancer is going to express itself very, very differently than a moon placed in, we think of an opposite sign, in Virgo, okay? So just remember that the planets have personalities and the zodiac signs are the way in which, the how in which the planets express their unique personalities, okay? And make sure you guys, if you have questions, please make sure I'm gonna move through this in a succinct fashion, but also so we can get to as many questions as we can. Okay, so this is very, very cool. This is a natal chart. Maybe you've seen one before, maybe you've never seen one in your life and you're like, well, what incarnation is going on? So we're gonna keep it very simple. Remember, keep it simple sweetheart. Oh, sorry. Keep it simple, sweetheart. All right. So remember this forever. This is a very cool thing to understand about the natal chart. So take a look at my little circle here. I like to color coordinate things. So keep in mind that at the center of this circle, this is you. This is the moment that you're born. This is the event or date in question. So basically think of it that whatever is whatever is being drafted from a specific chart is always at the center, okay? Just, just keep that in mind. Now, we are only looking at the zodiac signs and the planets tonight. So please remember always, 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 always that the zodiac signs, I wanna point like you guys can see where I'm pointing. So just remember that the zodiac signs are always on the outside of the natal chart, okay? And then the planets are always on the inside of the natal chart. Now let's just think of something for a moment. 
Let's just think of something for just a second. Now, first, if this is the center of the chart and this is you, so let's say this is the moment that you're born, this is the fixed moment, okay? The fixed moment that you came onto the planet. Now, think of it just like a wheel. Now, this is a natal chart, but we can also look at it, look at it as a wheel. This part is fixed. Now, what moves? The planets and the signs. So remember that always because I don't want you to look at a new chart or look at your chart or some of the charts we're going to look at tonight and be like, what the heck's going on? So just remember always that the zodiac signs are on the outside and the planets are on the inside, that the inside of the wheel never moves, meaning the center of the wheel as well as the, as well as the houses, those always stay fixed just like a wheel. And then the planets as well as the zodiac signs move the zodiac signs are always going to be on the outside of the wheel, and then the planets are going to be on the inside of the chart or the wheel. All right? You guys, if, you, if you're feeling good, give me two thumbs up. I'll feel it. Thumbs up from all over the world. Okay? All right. Okay, so let's just, I want to give you a quick, quick example before I take you into the 2020 as well as the 2021 charts, okay? So just to give you an example, this is where we find a planetary, I call them placements. So first off, we want to look for the planet, okay? I circled that in this peach color, and then we want to spot the zodiac sign that that planet is placed within, okay? So you guys, and by the way, I know that this is a lot going on, but if you're ever like, whoa, the sun is confusing me, what you'll do is you'll, you'll just find the little tick mark. So hopefully, Danielle, can you guys see my little blue dot? as like a pointer? Yes. Perfect. Thank goodness. Okay. So if you're ever like, what the heck, it's really close to another sign. All you want to do, my loves, is just take a look and see where exactly is that little blue check mark or that little blue tick mark. And that's going to show you where the planet actually lands. Because obviously the symbols are really big so that we can see them and identify them. And then the little tick marks are exactly by degree where that planet is. Don't worry. Don't worry if you know what degrees are and all this stuff. It's okay. I'm throwing a little bit of advanced stuff at you, but just very, very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to look for the planet. We're going to spot the zodiac sign that it's in. So as you guys can see, and this is what's going to correlate later when I walk you through some stuff with your natal chart. So I just want to get you familiar. So what we'll do again, we want to spot, we want to look for the planet. So the planet is in peach and then we spot the zodiac sign. So you guys, how are you feeling? You're getting it. Again, we wanna spot the planet, and then we take a look at the zodiac sign. All right, Danielle, how's that sounding? Is it feeling good? Are you enjoying yeah. this? Yeah, this is amazing. Um, one question, yes. actually, you, but is there a cheat sheet where we can look at, because I can recognize the moon, but Absolutely. that's the only planet that I can recognize based on the symbol. So I wonder if there's, yeah, both for the planets and for the signs. You got it. Absolutely. So in the follow-up, I have included a guide. And then I will also make sure in that follow-up email, Danielle, that I send you guys an actual cheat sheet of what everything is. It's very, very easy. Yes. Okay, amazing. It, Awesome. It's almost like using a map. So once you, and I'm going to show you guys, once we move past the charts, I'm going to show you guys, um, very, very simply, my system of studying astrology. I'm going to show you how I taught myself astrology. And it's really fun. And it's very, very, I mean, it's just really fun. Okay. It's really fun. And then once you get the hang of it, you're just, you're getting, I don't know, hopefully you'll thank me because you'll have something to do for the rest of the year. Okay. So let's go ahead and start to look into our 2021 charts. And then what I'm going to do as we look at these new charts is I am going to point out very simply exactly what we just went over so that when you're looking at your needle chart, you're going to feel very versed in how to do this. Okay. So let me go ahead and grab my, can you now see a Zodiac wheel, Danielle? Yes. It looks like okay. a rainbow. It looks like a rainbow. I know it's <laughs> gorgeous. Okay. So you guys, here is a, a natal chart 
for the beginning of this year. So we're going to switch gears just a little bit. I want to walk you through something really, really fascinating and also talk to you a little bit about why this year could be considered to be very powerful, very intense, and also what we can expect as we move into 2021. And what I want to do is I want to actually show you the why. I want to show you the astrological planetary why around this year and show you the changes that will be coming up in 2021. Okay. So first off, and don't worry, and that's such a great question, Danielle. Don't worry if these all look like very strange symbols at this moment. They, like I said, you're going to have like a map. So you're going to be like, okay, I see the sun. Okay, this looks like the Jupiter symbol. And then you're going to go ahead and look to the astrology sign. And then I'm going to give you a mode of study. Okay, just want to reiterate that for just a moment. Now let's switch gears and go back to the beginning of 2020. All right. I think we all can agree that this has been a very potent year, a lot of change, a lot of uncertainty, a lot going on. But what I like to say is I want to bring this down. So instead of looking at it as like the big collective lens, I want you guys just for a moment to think back to a moment in your life where you overcame something really, really hard. You move through something that had a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure. And what I want you to do just for a second before I move in, move into this demonstration is I want you to think what came out of that for you. Was there a lesson? Was there a piece of wisdom? Was there a big, you know, a new life chapter that maybe never would have occurred if that big challenge or that big pain hadn't come? So you guys have to remember that there's a saying in the esoteric, as above, so below. Low. So as within, so without. So we don't want to just look at the pie in the sky astrology. We always want to bring it back down to ourselves and see how we are a part of, you know, <laughs> the workings of the universe. That's why I love astrology so much. So hopefully you guys have felt into something and you can look at that challenge or that opportunity that you had to grow as a microcosm for what we're up to in 2020 and moving into 2021. So very, very simply, I would like to talk to you about Pluto. And I'm going to move through this a little bit quickly, you guys. So stay with me. But essentially with Pluto, so Pluto, remember I talked to you about the planet's personalities, right? So each planet has a personality. Pluto's personality is change and transformation, and it's a little bit intense, okay? So imagine if you're at a party with Pluto, with your pal Pluto, they're going to be kind of intense, all right? They're going to be your friend that you're like, wow, like love you so much, but you're really intense. Okay, all right? So that's Pluto energy, okay? Now let's take a look at Saturn energy. Saturn, these are going to be the three big planets that I talked to you about for 2020. Now Saturn energy if we were going to look at Saturn as a personality, he's a bit disciplined. He's like your, your friend that gets up, drinks their four sigmatic coffee at four in the morning and goes to the gym every day without fail. And they will not miss. And they're a little bit, um, let's say, let me think of it in a very lovely word. They can be a little bit stuffy. They can be a little bit just like, Hey, this is how I do things. And if you don't like it, that's, that's, that's the end of the story. So Saturn has a personality that's just very regimented, very, and very intense, very intense, but in a different way. But do you guys hear keywords intense? These are the two energies of that we started this year off of and the two planetary energies that we started this year off of. I want to talk to you about one more planetary personality that plays a big role in this year. We've got Jupiter. Now, Jupiter's personality is like the teacher. So let's just say Pluto. Like Pluto's personality is intense, Saturn's personality is disciplined, and Jupiter's personality is a teacher, but it's also fun, okay? Jupiter has this fun energy, this expansive energy. So I look at it as when we move through the hard work, there is lessons and there is expansion and beauty. So remember that, remember that, okay? So there's our planetary personalities. Now, 
You guys, remember I said, take a look at the tick marks. Do you see that these tick marks are remarkably close? If they could all be one on top of the other, they would have been. Now, what does that mean? What that means is that these planets, these big powerful planets, the intense planet and the disciplinary planet we're right on top of one another, and that's how they, we started this year. So there's a lot of intensity with that, an energy of discipline, an energy of intensity. Okay, remember that. So we started our year with this big conjunction, and essentially what I'm going to start to do, so you guys check this out, see how this is set to one month, Danielle, since you're the only person I can see, see how this is set to one month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be moving the chart one month ahead. So we're going to look at the entire year, but we're going to go warp speed. Okay. Now what you'll see is every time I click this right arrow, you're going to see the month actually change. And then you're also going to see the planets change, but not to worry. They're always going to go to the right. Okay. So just follow along to the right. And what I want you to keep your eye on is your really intense pal Pluto. Okay. We're going to, we're going to give Pluto a, a nice energy tonight, but just remember 2020, a big energy of this year has been, has been this really potent, intense change maker transformation energy of Pluto. Okay. So just keep your eye on Pluto. Keep your eye on the ball, all right? I'm going to keep moving this forward. Now, as we continue, you will start to see that there is a party going on around Pluto almost this entire year. There is something either remarkably close or not too far away from this change maker, intense, transformatory planet. All right. When we move into April, we've got Jupiter, which remember what, what's up with Jupiter, you guys, Jupiter has that personality of expansion of fun of, but, but also of lessons. So Jupiter isn't all fun and games. It can expand something almost like to, a an, the, to a very, very big degree, but all for the sake of learning and growth. All right. So let's keep going. Stay with me. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on Pluto. You can see here we are in May. Here we are in June. Here we are in July. Here we are in August. I'm going to keep going. You can see there's still this dance between these three planets. And let me just express very quickly, this is extremely rare. This is extremely rare. I'm not going to get into why, because that's going to just be a whole other, that could be a whole separate webinar, but essentially just understand that these conjunctions and this dance of these very powerful outer planets as they're known is rare. It doesn't happen very often. One more thing I want to add in. Pluto, remember our pal Pluto, our intense friend at the party, Pluto is a slow mover. Pluto takes 248 years to move around the entire zodiac wheel. How often do you have a birthday? Every year. Well, Pluto, a Pluto return or a Pluto birthday would happen every 248 years. So you just have to understand Pluto moves really slow. So let's keep moving into November. We still have these exact conjunctions with Jupiter and Pluto as well as Saturn. Let's keep going into December. We're starting to see a little bit of a break in that energy. So we start to see Jupiter and Saturn moving past Pluto. Let's go into January, 2021. We start now, these are inner planets. Don't mind them for a moment. They're just little chatty Cathy's. They're, they, they're a dime a dozen. We see them all the time. Okay, let's keep our eye on Pluto and let's take a look at Saturn and Jupiter. Now, what's going on here? Saturn and Jupiter have started to move away from Pluto out of Capricorn and into Aquarius, which I'm going to talk about for a moment in just a moment, but let's keep going. So we're starting to see this break in the energy. So here we go again. You guys start to see that Pluto is starting to be alone. He was too intense at the party. Everyone's like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to talk about this at this party. Like you're just really like, we love you, but like, we're going to just let you be over here by the punch bowl. We're going to carry on and we're going to go into Aquarius. Oh my God, you guys, I'm sorry. This is a ridiculous analogy. Any of my students who are here, they know I have the weirdest c comparisons at times. <laughs> what's, what's that, Danielle? Oh, I just said it's great. I do that all the time too. When I'm explaining, you know, compounds and different mushrooms, we have to, we have, to have metaphors. So the personality is great. 
Perfect. I know. I heard you say that yesterday and I was like, perfect. My, pe- my person, this is <laughs> totally how I am. So let's keep going. So we can see, now we see Pluto is starting to really be on its own. Jupiter, I'm sorry, Jupiter and Saturn, they are really moving away. Now we're getting into April of 2021. Sorry, it still says 2020, just focus on little 2021 right here. And we start to see that Pluto is really getting left alone in Capricorn. Let's keep going. We start to see a break in the energy between Saturn and Jupiter. Let's keep going into June. This is where I'm going to stop. And by June 2021, we start to see a bit more of a even dispersion of energy of the planet. So you guys can see this, whether you know exactly what it all means or you don't, you can just witness with the naked eye that something's changed, that there is a dispersion of energy. Think of it when you are at a party and you're standing talking to six people versus if you're standing and talking to 16 people, way big difference in the energy. So the planets are the same and that's what a conjunction is. So the big conjunction, let me take you back a little bit. So you guys can like a big see. breath of fresh that? Air. It feels like a big breath of fresh air to have. It's, yes. Of a that's, crowd that's it. Yeah. That's it. Because look here, you can just see any, like I said, whether you know exactly what's going on or you don't, you can see, wow, there's like something going on. Right. And then as we start to move forward and we see this break, as we get into later in the year, we're like, Ooh, there's space. Everybody's like, there's social distancing or like, by, you know, different houses, like they're all in different signs, not completely, but they're just, there's a different look in the energy and we can just see that with the naked eye. So as we start to move into 2021, Pluto will, Pluto will be on its own in Capricorn, which means we will still be learning and exploring the Plutonian themes in Capricorn, which I'm not going to get into tonight because it's just way too big of a conversation. We'll still be exploring Pluto and Capricorn energy, but what will happen is there will no longer be these other big, powerful planets, the teacher and the disciplinarian having a powwow with their super intense pal Pluto. How does that feel? How are you guys doing? I wish I could see you right now, but I really, really hope that this is landing. And just to give you a very simple breakdown of 2020 and 2021, and just remember, remember what I talked about a bit earlier, when we understand the planet's personalities and then how it expresses itself through the zodiac sign, we can really, really get to know what are the themes of a year? What are the themes of a month? What's the themes of a birth chart? So what I invite you guys to do, which is something that I'm going to walk you through in a moment as you're doing your own research around your natal chart, is you can go ahead and take a look, go on to good old Google and be like, what does Pluto and Capricorn mean? What is Pluto, what does Saturn in Aquarius mean? What does Saturn and Capricorn mean? So you guys, let me just go back. So when I say Saturn and yeah, let me go back a little more because as we get to the end of 2020, Saturn and Jupiter are moving into Aquarius. So if you want to get to know a little bit more and make a bit more sense of this year, what I invite you to do is get to know what Capricorn means. I'll give you my definition in just a moment. And then also get to know more deeply the basic personalities of these very powerful planets. Because as you guys can see, as we continue continue, let me go back to June. We don't have a conjunction to our intense pal Pluto any longer. And as we continue through the years, you start to see how everything starts to, it starts to spread out. And I have to stop myself, honestly, because I just want to go so complex and and deep and keep going, but I'm going to stop right there because I don't, I don't, I want to make this super bite-sized and really, really powerful for you guys. And I really encourage you, especially as it pertains to the astrology of a given time of a given year to really, really do your own research. Okay. There's so much magic. And let me just say that as you get to know 
your astrology as you get to know your natal chart. What's amazing is that getting to know the collective natal chart, getting to know what's happening in the world at large, it's easy because my loves, it's all the same system. So what I'm teaching you tonight is you can literally, like I love that adage, if you teach someone, if you give someone a fish, they can eat for a day. If you give, if you teach someone to fish, they can eat for a lifetime. So essentially what I'm teaching you tonight is how to feast for a lifetime on the on your own research and your own practice with astrology so that you can go really deep into your own natal chart and into the happenings of the years ahead. Let me take a sip. Okay, as you do that, we have some really amazing questions. Awesome, let's in. do it. Um, so Lisa is wondering, does it mean something from those charts you were just showing us that all the planets are on one side? So under one side, it looks really empty. Yes, that is a great question. But again, I'm going to bring you right back here. Keep it simple. Sweet. Sorry, I do my keep it so sweet. Whatever, we'll do three. Keep it simple. I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a big thing to pay attention to. The only thing that I would offer, and this would be maybe in a more advanced course, is if we were looking at the houses and we were seeing, are the planets in a majority of personal houses? Are they in interpersonal houses? Are they in transpersonal houses? And so again, you can see how just, and this is cool. And I love your question, my love. It's wonderful because astrology really is about observation. It is about looking at things and being like, why is that that way? But just to, just for the sake of our beginner's mind for tonight, um, we're not, we won't go there, but if you get into the houses and you start to learn more about the houses, you could deduce like, oh, wow, the, this part of the chart is completely empty. All the planets are cruising through these personal, interpersonal or transpersonal houses. And that could say something about what is going on. So yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, I hope that helps. And it's, uh, several people are really curious what software you're using. They're like, this. Is oh my God, you guys, of course. Let me take you back over. So the software is called Ephemeris. So if you can see my drop down right here, it's like an eye, kind of like an iPhone, and then Ephemeris. P-H-E-M-E-R-I-S. It is amazing. Best $49.99 purchase, $50 purchase I've ever made for my astrology career. I love it. It is so comprehensive and yeah, it's amazing. So ephemeris. Amazing. Okay. We'll keep going and then I'll answer. We'll get to some of these questions in a little. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. This part is going to be very, very quick and it's going to be a little bit of a repeat of what I walked you guys through before we looked at the 2020 and 2021 needle charts. So Let's take a look and find your big three in your natal chart. Now, you guys, not to worry, Danielle and Four Sigmatic are putting together an incredible follow-up email that's going to have everything that you require to look up your chart and to go deeper with your, your natal chart and with astrology in general. <clears throat> So I'm just going to breeze through this and just please know that you'll be taken care of. Okay. So let's first talk about the big three in your beautiful natal chart. Now, just a quick reminder, your natal chart is based on three very important things. Your birthplace. I'm sorry. Let me go in order of importance. Your birth date your birth time as well as your birthplace. Okay. So that is just what a natal chart is based off of. And what I would love for you guys to take a look at just to get you started on your astrology journey. And even for my advanced astrologers who are in here and they already know their big three placements, go back and study them. There's always something that you can learn and there's always a way to go deeper with what you already know in this system. So first and foremost, I want you to take a look at your sun place Everybody might be like, well, done, Natalia. I'm an Aries or I'm a Leo or I'm an Aquarius. I know that. But what I want you to do is take a look at the personality of the sun. And the sun is your basic personality. It's how you, it's your sunglasses for reality, right? So your sun placement is very powerful. That is how you express yourself in the world in a conversation. You guys in this webinar tonight, you are experiencing a little bit of my sun, a tiny bit of my moon, and a lot of my ascendant, probably a lot of my sun because I feel comfortable with you guys. But I'm going to walk you through what these mean in just a second because this is very cool. 
Now, remember, we talked about the moon, the basic personality of the moon. That's our emotions. Okay. That's our deep self, our secret self. That's the, that's the side of us that we show in intimate relationships at home and when we feel comfortable and safe. Okay. Then our ascendant, I'm going to walk you guys through this in just a second. So your ascendant, this is how you project yourself. This is how you are public speaking that like you guys, I'm just going to give you a quick astrology joke that maybe no one will find funny, but we'll give it a go. So the, my ascendant is shining in this keynote situation. I have a Capricorn ascendant. I love things to be very concise and very aesthetic and in their place. So the ascendant is how you present Present. So think of the ascendant of your natal chart as your keynote to the world. It's how you present yourself, okay? So your sun placement, your basic personality, the sunglasses that you take reality in from, your moon placement, your emotions, your secret self, the way that you are in an intimate relationship or at home or when you feel safe, your ascendant, how you project yourself, your handshake, your physicality. Your physicality is expressed through your ascendant. Um, as well as just how you are, even when you're uncomfortable, when you're in a new situation or you're uncomfortable in a new situation. Okay. So these are our big three. Now let me walk you through how to find them. Remember this, my, my, uh, my very comprehensive chart here. Now let's just take a look at spotting a placement. Okay. So one more time, we remember the Zodiac signs are always on the outside. The planets are always on the inside and the ascendant is always to, you guys hold up your hand, hold up your left hand, sparkle it and say, my ascendant is always on the left. Say it out loud. My ascendant is always on my left. Yes. And my ascendant is sign only. My ascendant is sign only. What does that mean? Yes, because the ascendant is not a planet. So the, the sun placement, that's a planet. The moon placement, that's a planet. The ascendant is just a placement. It's not... It is not a, it's not a planetary placement. Okay. This is where astrology gets very complex and fascinating. So we're going to keep it super simple. I'm going to go to my next slide. So remember what I walked you guys through. Let's find the sun, the moon, and the ascendant of this chart. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to spot the sun and then we're going to look for the zodiac sign that it's in. All right. We're going to spot the moon. And we're going to look for the zodiac sign that it's in. And don't, don't worry again, you're going to have a chart so you know what all the planetary symbols look like, what all the astrology signs look like. All right. And then remember, put up your left hand again. My ascendant is always on the left. Yes, yes, yes. And it is sign only. Okay. So when I'm going to spot my ascendant, I'm only going to look at the sign. So you guys see this thick line here? this thick black line, this is always the ascendant. And this, whatever zodiac sign is on the other end of this thing, that's my ascendant sign. All right. What that means is that at the moment that I was born, this is the sign that was ascending on the horizon. Okay. So again, remember, this is you in the middle, the moment that you're born, this is exactly what the planets were doing in the heavens the moment that you were born. And these are the zodiac signs that they were partying in the moment that you were born. Okay. I want to just make sure really quickly that that feels clear because this is going to be a very, very important part of you finding your big three. So, and I'd like to tell you really quickly how to do that. Yeah. Yes. Katie is wondering if the ascendant is also known as the rising. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yes, it is. So think of the ascendant, like it's ascending or rising synonymous, right? Yes. Exact same thing. Yeah. That's where the artistry of astrology comes in. Cause we use different words, use different things. Yeah, babe. What else? Um, Dawn doesn't know her time of birth and is wondering if there's, you know, of a way to find that out. If you don't know. It's in that beautiful follow-up email for you, my loves. It's going gonna, it's gonna to send you to a wiki, a wiki how on how to create a solar chart. So if you don't know your time of birth, I have a lot of people who come to me, don't know their time of birth, um, then you're all set. And it's going to give you literally a walkthrough in the wiki how of exactly how to pull a chart when you don't know the time of birth. Perfect.
And Peter awesome. wants to know how important the time of birth is. It's extremely important. Yes. And I know you guys, and I, I look, if you don't know your time of birth, you, you don't, you're not able to access your birth certificate or whatever it may be, do your very, very best. But guess what? Here's how you will know if the time is off, you'll be like, who's this? You'll be doing your studying. You'll be like, who's this? This isn't me. Um, one time in my young astrology years, I read a chart for someone and he was like really uncomfortable. And he's like, I'm so sorry, this isn't me at all. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, okay, what's your time of birth? And I put it in wrong. So remember, if wow. it doesn't sound like you, it's because the time is off. So you can mess with the time. That's one way to do it. Um, or again, you can do that solar return chart. I'm sorry, not solar return clear, cancel, delete. You can do that solar chart. And then, um, you can just do your very, very best Do your very, very best. The cool thing about a solar chart is that the houses become a little less important, but when you know the exact time, the houses can be read. They, they're, they're very specific. But again, you guys remember tonight, I'm only talking about the planets and the zodiac signs because that's where I want you to get started. Then if you want to go crazy and have a good time before the end of 2020, you can get to know the house placements and just know that all you got to do for the house placements is just cruise on the inside. Here's my sun in Aries. I just go up here, third house. Okay. I want to know what house my moon in Sagittarius is. 11th house. All right. And that's how you find the, the house placement for a, I'm sorry, the house for a planetary placement. Okay. And I will definitely, will hopefully we'll be able to answer lots of questions. So this is really specific. And you guys, the last piece that I want to give you so that you can study your chart is I want you, there's, uh, there's a couple books that I recommend. Um, and there's only a couple websites that I really like, but I really want you to be mindful about where you study your astrology information. It's like, if you go to a psychic and she doesn't have, let's say your best interest and she tells you something thing. And, um, it, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not true, but you think about it till the last day that you're on earth. You know what I mean? You have to be really mindful where you get your information just because, I mean, and this is up to you, but I want you to really find information that empowers you, that helps you have fun with this system and helps you get to know yourself. So please be mindful of the articles, the websites, and the books that you source, as well as know that the very simple way of looking up your astrology, I'm going to show you very, very quickly. Google.com. Thank you. Hi, Google. So let's say sun and Aries natal chart. Boom. All right. I actually like stars like you. It's a great website. Cafe astrology is one of my absolute favorites. Okay. Let's say moon in Sagittarius natal chart. You guys see what I'm doing? This is how I learned astrology. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. This is it. And then Cafe Astrology, again, I really like Astro Style. Basically, my two favorite astrology sites, my loves, is cafeastrology.com and astrostyle.com. Let's say I want to get to know my ascendant. Google knows what's up. It's like, do you want to know woman, man? What do you want to know? So, right? So, Capricorn Ascendant, Natal Chart, um, Cafe Astrology, Stars Like You, and then you can just really do your research. All right. Yay. And I had a really cute um, ending slide for you just to say thank you. And then I know we're going to do questions, but you guys, my Capricorn rising needs you to see it. All right. Thank you so much. And I'd love to take some questions and I'll go ahead and take my screen off share. Amazing. I feel <laughs> thank like you guys for another several hours. I'm like, That's I know. And dancing this in an hour was like a massive feat for me. So I hope that I did it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, okay. We have so many, really, you all asked hundreds of questions, which is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you here. Um, but okay, let's see. Erin has a lovely question. Erin um, is curious how the planets get their personalities. Oh, that is a great 
question, my love. I have no freaking clue. That would just be, honestly, that would be just the mystic in me. The answer that I would say is, you know, our, let's say our ancestors, astrology, we cannot even pinpoint the original inception of astrology. It is, it is evolved and moved through so many different cultures over thousands and thousands of years. And so what we can deduce is very simply that our ancestors looked at the, um, the planet correct, looked at the planet or looked at the constellation. And then what happened is they took a look at what is going on with humanity. Like I, someone asked a great question and I said, astrology has so much to do with observation. And that's what our ancestors did. They took a look at what was going on and then the impacts and the expressions, the energetic expressions through people at a given time. Now with the planets more specifically, um, this is what I really love. There's actually a great book that talks a lot about this. I totally geek out on stuff like this. So this book is called The Only Astrology Book You'll ever need. I don't always recommend it because there's some kind of intense um, placements in here, but there is also a lot of amazing information. She talks about the um, the astronomy and kind of the science of each of the planets. And then we see how that ties into the energetic behavior of the planet in astrology. So I hope that that answers your question, babe. It's so fascinating. I was just thinking about, I, I lived in India and I studied herbal medicine there in Ayurveda and the astrology is still very embedded in traditional cultures and a lot of folklore and different um, traditional medicine systems as well. And um, there's a lot of Indian doctors who they won't um, work with a patient until they know what's happening astrologically and what's happening mm -hmm. with that so cool. specific person they're dealing with. And so they look at this, you know, when, when delivering babies or when going into an operation and, you know, I love, we've talked about this before, Natalia, but part of our philosophy at Four Sigmatic is reviving ancient traditions. And we of course yeah. focus on, on the ingredients in the physical body, but the, yes. the stories and these other parts of wellness are so much a part of it. So oh, that's so cool. That's a great question. I hope I answered it well for you. Yes. Okay. Dylan has a great question and he wants to know if you teach courses on astrology and I know this, but Yes, I do. I do love. I have some digital courses that are always available there, evergreen on my on my online store. And then also I actually have a live astrology class that begins next Wednesday. So Danielle and Four Sigmatic, they're actually going to send you guys a link if you would like to join and go deeper on your natal chart. So yes, I have a lot of digital evergreen courses like astrology essentials. And then this course is called the empowered astrologer and that's a live course and just imagine five weeks 90 minutes at a time and i will be geeking out on astrology with you and guiding you through your natal charts so it's going to be really fun we we can do a lot more than in an hour but this was awesome we got so much done and it's very it's very cool to do astrology in a concise way so we don't overcomplicate it but yes dylan absolutely i love thank you for asking <laughs> so lillian would like to know. So you get to know yourself with the sign match and how does this help you in changing or in improving? Oh my gosh. Wait, it broke up for just a sec. Could you um, repeat that please? Yeah. So it's like, she's wondering, I believe she identifies mm -hmm. where her signs are, what planets they're in. And then what's that next step to really um, shifting or changing or improving your relationship with yourself from that sense of knowing? Yes. So as you get to study, let's say you study about your sun sign. So as you get to study about your sun sign or your moon sign, you will notice that there, there are powerful, positive expressions of that sign. And then there are shadow or deficit expressions. And you'll be like, oh, this sounds familiar. This sounds like something I've done for the last 13 years of my life. And what's amazing is what we can do. There's two things that I suggest with this. Number one is we can really honor the shadow side of that sign or that placement and work with the more powerful expressions of the sign. Number two, we can look to the opposing sign, um, the sign that opposes that placement, and we can get to know its like it's positive expressions and that's how we can improve upon a challenging shadow 
shadow aspect of a placement and we can also take a look at it from a an elemental perspective so let's say what was this babe's name the Lily. question Lillian. So let's say Lillian, you have tons and tons of water in your chart and you can prone to get very, um, like your emotions, like really, really can get the best of you. And you know that there's maybe a healthier way to handle your emotions. You can take a look at the positive empowering expressions of the, the planet, the planetary placements of the signs that your planets are placed in. And, or you can even look at elementally. Okay. Well, what can, what's the opposite of water? Maybe fire. What are the characteristics and traits of water? I'm sorry, of fire. And maybe I can take on some of those traits and help to balance all this water that I have in my personality. So that's a really great question. And that's a way that the esoteric and these ancient, you know, ancient studies that they can really bring us back to the basics and um, help us understand ourselves in a much deeper manner. Yeah, that was a great answer. It reminds me um, of the saying, you can't clean up the dirt on your floor until you look down and realize that there's dirt on your floor. And so it's this similar True. idea. And Susanna asked a question which relates perfectly through this to this point, which is, can I change things in my life through astrology? And I'll let mm -hmm. you have an answer in a moment. But how I first heard about this really stuck with me. It's like the apple's going to fall from the tree no matter what we do. But if we know the apple's going to fall from the tree, we can perhaps shift our behavior and our relationship to that apple tree yes. to maybe catch it or to yes. you know, harvest it or to have this dance with it. Um, so yes. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I absolutely love that. So can you, can you repeat your question one more time? I just want to make sure I really answer it. Yes. Really? And before I do, I want to honor everyone's time and give you a yes. long awaited discount code and then <laughs> stay for a minute or two and Natalia can finish answering some of these questions. But I'll also give you uh, lots of links in the follow up email so that you can be in touch with her and follow her on Instagram and remember to tag for Sigmatic and Natalia to get your gifts. Um, but the discount code is Natalia10. So you can go um, use it on any Four Sigmatic products. Of course, I recommend using it on our mushroom blend, which is really the perfect product to support our immune systems in these changing mm. times and the shift of season. Um, so go enjoy. It's a thank you from us and for being here. Um, and with that said, we'll finish this question. So Susanna, can I change things in my life through astrology? Yes. Absolutely. And also I was like, the, the focus one's perfect because you're going to want to focus for all of your astrology research as well. So with that, my love, absolutely. You know, self-awareness is the first key to change. And the thing that I love about astrology and getting to know the natal chart is that w what's so amazing about it is that you, you can get to see parts of yourself that maybe you've judged or parts of yourself that maybe you've rejected or that you've never been aware of. And the first key to change is awareness. We cannot change what we don't know is, is happening. And so what the, what I love about astrology and in a Way that it's really served me is it's really helped me to see the parts of me that I once found ostracizing or like I couldn't accept or made me feel very alone. And when I saw, oh wow, there's rhyme or reason to my personality, there's rhyme or reason to my trajectory. And we really just skimmed the very, very tip of the iceberg of astrology tonight, but these basic tools will be really helpful. And what you can take a look at, my love, with even just these big three is you can see what is what are the nuances, the power parts of my personality, my sun expression, my moon expression, expression and the shadow parts of my personality. My ascendant, you guys, for me, I'll just give you a very quick anecdote. Um, I have a Capricorn ascendant and um, Capricorn's can be regimented, disciplined, kind of intense, and um, also a little bit shy. And it's interesting, and, and this is the expression through the ascendant, I used to really judge myself because as an airy son, I'm meant to be very exuberant and, ex and kind of extroverted. But that, uh, that uh, ascendant 
it squares it. So what that means is there's challenge in the expression. There's challenge in the connection between those two signs. And I used to judge myself for being kind of shy around other people. But when I started to do my study around my, asc my ascendant more specifically, I was like, oh, wait, like this is a part of me that makes me me. It's okay for there to be discrepancies and um, differences in my personality and the way that I express myself. So I hope that that answers your question, Susanna, but really, you know, self-acceptance and self-awareness are some of the most powerful parts for change. And, you know, hopefully this can be a really beautiful opening and awakening to, uh, you know, an exploration of self and, and maybe a new chapter for the way that you relate to yourself, which I believe only creates change and magic in, in the life. So I really hope that that helps. I feel like that's just the best advice to leave all of us with. It's yes. So powerful. And I can't wait to look up my sign and I'll include the name of the program that you use in the follow-up because we have yes, perfect. people asking all about that. So don't worry. We'll, we'll let you know there. Awesome. And if people want to follow you and stay in touch with you right now, they don't even want to wait for my follow-up email tomorrow. Where can they find you? Just at Natalia underscore Benson. So I think Four Sigmatic has tagged me in a recent post if you want to go there, but it's just N-A-T-A-L-I-A underscore Benson, B-E-N-S-1. -E I think my name is right here too. And my website is nataliabenson.com if anybody would like to check it out. And, and please connect with me. I'm very active on Instagram. And this has been amazing. This has been so fun. I had such a, such a joy for me to get to share this with you and Four Sigmatic and Danielle. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for the incredible questions. I feel like we could go on and on. <laughs> That's how astrology is. You just keep going. So it's so true. We could keep you all night. There are so many <laughs> questions, but I want to honor everyone's time and um, thank you all so much for being here. And yeah, it's just so important, especially in wild times like this, that we support all aspects of our well-being, right? So it's supporting our physical body and it's so much more than that. So I'm, you know, with these webinars, it's finding context and perspective and being able to really find compassion for ourselves and better connect with ourselves and our families and our communities through um, that elevated sense of wellness. So thank you, Natalia. This was fantastic. We have so many people with saying thank you and sharing their gratitude. So yeah, on behalf of everyone here, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye.